In this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways to produce more peppers. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Justin Lane and I've been managing my family's garden center business here in Shelby, North Carolina for the last 10 years. And I make these videos to dispel the myth of a green thumb and prove that anyone can be a successful gardener. With that said, let's rock and roll. We're here in the month of June and in the months of May and June, the first thing I like to do when I'm planting my peppers is encourage vertical growth. You can see this pepper is nice and tall and, and that's good because how else is a pepper gonna support a bumper crop of peppers if it's not grown up and big and strong? When it comes to pepper plants, you have to really practice patience. Don't be surprised if you don't see any pepper production until the months of July and August. The first way I like to encourage vertical growth on my peppers is again, early on in the season, provide them with plenty of nitrogen. And there's lots of good fertilizers on the market out there. If you're going organic, uh, blood meal is super good. It's a 1200, I believe. 12 is, uh, the first number in this, that's your nitrogen count. And if you don't have blood meal, just plant them in some really rich uh, compost like worm castings. That'll provide your peppers with a good amount of nitrogen. Fish emulsion is another good um, uh, strong nitrogen fertilizer. And this will just get your peppers to grow up nice and strong so that they can support flowers later on. The second way I encourage vertical growth might be a little bit painful for y'all. <laughs> I actually pull off the flowers and peppers on plants that are starting to produce peppers and flowers too early. Uh, right here I have six bell pepper plants and these are growing up nice and tall. This one is still lacking and it's so short that I can't expect to pull hundreds of peppers off this if it's only a foot tall. You know, it's looking pretty pitiful. So what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll pinch off flowers And also, here it comes, the peppers that it's starting to produce. And you can still eat these, you can eat peppers at any stage, so you're not wasting them. But what this is gonna do is signal to the plant, hey, I gotta keep growing before I'm producing flowers and fruit. After I get my pepper plants grown up nice and tall, the second thing I do to get more peppers is to encourage flowering. Later in the season, it's important to back off the nitrogen because you don't want all leaves and no flowers. So you have to switch to a fertilizer that's higher in phosphorus and potassium. Phosphorus is the middle number, potassium is the third number. Bone meal, rock phosphate, even wood ash, these are all good sources of phosphorus and potassium. But what you need to do is consider how long these take to break down. So you don't wanna wait until like August to start putting these in your garden because your plants won't have time to absorb them. You know, something like banana peels, that's a great source of potassium, which is gonna um, help support your fruits and not get blossom in rot. But you wanna put that in immediately in your garden at the time of planting. So it has plenty of time to break down. I've got some bone meal right here and the first number is three again that's your nitrogen the second number is six and that's your phosphorus remember the second number phosphorus supports flower production and the third number is your potassium and that supports fruit production i noticed a couple weeks ago on these peppers they were flowering heavy and as you can see they've turned into fruit i mean this one is just absolutely loaded down check out this one in the back here I mean, this is what you want to see. Just a really nice, strong and sturdy plant loaded down with peppers. And these will probably ripen up and be ready next month. When it comes to the topic of peppers and flower production, you're going to inevitably hear about topping your pepper plants. This is where you take a pair of pruning shears and you cut out the central leader of your pepper. What this does is send the growth hormone that is at the top of the stem down to the lower leaf nodes and it encourages branching. Those extra branches are gonna make for a bushier plant and ultimately produce more flowers and peppers. So what do I think about topping your pepper plants? Well, I think it depends on your growing zone. Here in Shelby, North Carolina, here in the South, uh, we might not have a frost until Thanksgiving. So there's plenty of time 
to reap the benefits of topping your pepper plants. You have to keep in mind when you're cutting off the top of that stem, you're taking away weeks of growth and it's going to take that much longer to get back to where you were and then eventually reap the benefits of more flowers and peppers. Say you're in a growing zone like Michigan, where your season's going to be extremely short and you're not going to have enough time to really reap those benefits. So if you've been watching our videos, you'll know that this is uh, one of the pepper plants I overwintered. This is a Carolina Reaper. And just look at how loaded down it is. I mean, there's literally like hundreds of peppers on this thing. And there's nice flowers uh, coming in at the top. This pepper plant was cut back in the month of October or November, I believe, of last year. Overwintered in a greenhouse, so it's had plenty of time to rejuvenate and come back and my goodness has it come back tenfold. My third and final method to producing more peppers is to maintain a regular watering schedule. Many people get confused when it comes to watering pepper plants because they think this random cat just walked up. This is not mine, but I'm going to pet it because it has a collar on. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> hey kitty. All right, who are you? All right. Many people get confused when it comes to watering pepper plants because they think since they are native to hot and arid climates that they don't need water, but nothing could be further from the truth. The worst thing you can do for your pepper plants is forget to water and then water them a bunch later trying to make up for it. Because when your pepper plants dry out, one of the things that happens is the flowers will actually turn brown and fall off. And if that happens, then you have zero chances of a pepper coming forth and an irregular watering schedule will also hurt your actual peppers that make it to fruit because it's going to cause blossom end rot. They're going to fall off and you're going to be stuck without peppers. Irrigation is going to go a long way when it comes to watering your pepper plants because it's going to keep the soil consistently moist. But if you're like me and you're still using a watering hose, that's okay. Just use the water stop water method and I'm going to show you how to do that. So all you need to do is get your hose and water down at the base and let that fill up for a few seconds and then stop. Let that water drain down. This is going to encourage uh, a deep watering. And as soon as that water settles, we're going to do it again. That way we're not just wetting the surface. We're getting down deep and those roots are really going to enjoy it. I have my pepper plants planted in really, really rich, fast draining compost. So for me, this means daily watering. Maybe at home you're in a cooler climate. Maybe your soil is holding more water. You might have to back off and go once a week. But either way, mulching with something like a hardwood mulch, a sterile straw, pine needles is a very, very good idea because it's going to lock in the moisture, keep your soil from drying out, suppress weeds and protect your roots. All right, if you're still watching this video, I'm going to reward you with a bonus tip. Let's say your peppers are getting up nice and tall and strong. Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is give them some type of support. I personally love tomato cages for this. It's funny. I don't use tomato cages for uh, tomatoes. I use them for peppers. And the reason I like them for peppers is each ring is going to give the plant a lot of support but yet they're not going to outgrow the top too much to where they're going to fall over. As you can see, this guy right here is starting to lean over. He's getting heavy with fruit and a good strong wind could go ahead and break that. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and support him. He's a little big. I probably should have done this sooner, but I'm going to bend uh, the legs of this tomato cage out a little more and I'm going to place it over the pepper without damaging any leaves or limbs and then i'm going to bend these back in some and then when you push the actual ring down you want to be careful not to sever any roots and this is going to give this pepper plenty of support so as it matures it's naturally going to grow up through the wings the rings and i'm not going to have to worry about it breaking I've really enjoyed making these videos and watching the community grow. If you want to join, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll get updates every time we release a new video. Until next time, become a plant person.